Hey everyone, welcome to Mythology Explained. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Chinese dragons. More specifically, their powers and abilities, their appearance, their hierarchy, and their associations with the full spectrum of ancient Chinese society, from peasant to emperor. Let's get into it. Where dragons and fire have become synonymous in Western culture, Chinese dragons break from this tradition, instead being associated with wind and water. Unlike dragons in other cultures, who were often depicted as destructive and as avaricious wealth hoarders, Chinese dragons were incarnations of strength, intelligence, and luck, attributes that would be bestowed on those worthy of them. Those venerated and wielding power, royalty, especially emperors, epitomizing this, were compared to dragons. Those incompetent and unimportant were held in contempt through comparisons to lesser creatures, such as worms. Dragons were among the four smartest creatures in ancient Chinese culture. The other three were the unicorn, the phoenix, and the tortoise. This deep intelligence was one of the reasons emperors and dragons were so closely associated. Strength, power, and good fortune were others. Dragons possessed many amazing abilities. They could shapeshift, vanish, and materialize, and grow or shrink in size. Where their real power lay, though, was in their affinity for water. A dragon's power encompassed a wide variety of weather phenomena centering on air and water, including floods, typhoons, rivers, rain, swift winds, hailstorms, and tornadoes. Large bodies of water, great rivers, and cloud-covered skies were their abodes. When they flew, lightning flashed and thunder boomed. The Chinese dragon was an amalgamation of many animal parts. The historian R. Dawson gives the following description. As chief among the animals, the dragon was supposed to be composed of outstanding features of other animals. The traditional description gives it the horns of a stag, the forehead of a camel, the eyes of a demon, the neck of a snake, the belly of a sea monster, the scales of a carp, the claws of an eagle, the pads of the tiger, and the ears of an ox. There are other descriptions too. One has the Chinese dragon similarly synthesized but by using different animals. This description includes the antlers of a deer, the eyes of a rabbit, the belly of a frog, and the body of a snake. An interesting theory hypothesized by the Chinese scholar Wen Yuduo postulates that dragons personified the unification of China. Each tribe had its own sacred animal, so by being a creature that combined these many sacred animals, the dragon became the symbol of a united imperial China. However, it should be said that the dragon was imbued with great importance before the tribes were unified, a fact that doesn't fit well with Wen Yuduo's theory. It should be said that there were different types of dragons. For example, some have a more turtle-like form, while others have a more fish-like form. Regardless, the serpentine dragon seems to have been the most popular type, as well, the most powerful dragons were all depicted as the serpentine variety. In folk tales, Lung Wang was the dragon king. All other dragons were subordinate to him, even the four dragons said to preside over the four seas. Ao Quang ruled the eastern sea, Ao Qin in the southern sea, Ao Jun the western sea, and Ao Shun the northern sea. Though dragons possessed great strength, deep wisdom, and were ubiquitously honored, ultimately, they all bound to the Jade Emperor, the supreme deity in Chinese mythology. All dragons humbled themselves before the Jade Emperor in the third month of the year, which was the month that saw the heaviest rains. In ancient China, the vast majority of people were peasant farmers. As such, the way these lower caste folk honored dragons was the most prevalent in ancient China. Farmers honored dragons, garnering favor to bless crops with rain so as to ensure bountiful harvests. Dragon dances in rural, agrarian communities were common rituals of prayer that beseeched the generosity of dragons, and all manners of iconography was used to enhance the potency of these rituals. The emperor, called the Son of Heaven, was the most important person in China, and the dragon was the most important creature in Chinese mythology, so naturally, it was these two who would be most closely associated. This connection went so far as to have the emperor as a living manifestation of the dragon aspect. To broadcast this connection and the many auspicious expressions inherent in it, silk robes intricately emblazoned with dragons were the emperor's garb of choice. The throne was ornately carved with dragons, and the palace was adorned with dragon decorations of every kind. The dragon had five claws per foot when depicted in connection with the emperor. Those depicted in connection with nobility and other royal members only had four claws. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, be not afraid of going slowly, be afraid only of standing still.